Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? Hey, this is Gregory Wilds coming live to you from Houston, Texas with this inspirational morning walk. Man, and my apologies, I am almost um, almost close to half an hour late, usually be on at 8.45 my time. But I'm having some technical difficulty with this phone. I'll get a new phone and, you know, still trying to figure it out. And um, I couldn't just, just couldn't go live. Just couldn't go live this morning until I had to figure it out. But I was determined I can still get this word out because for whatever reason, the enemy probably don't want me to get this word out today because I'm talking about the power of God's word. And I think this one probably going to shake him up some uh, once people figure out how much power the word of God has. But I was determined I would still get it out. I was not giving up. I'm going to get this word out. But yes, guys, for first time listeners, this is Gregory Wiles um, coming from Houston, Texas. I get some exercise in the mornings and I share my thoughts with you guys. But this morning here, we're just above freezing. We're just above freezing, like about 34 degrees right now, 33, 34 degrees. So I'm going to bundle up a little bit. It's, it's a little too cold for me to walk, but I'll find some way to get some work in. But this morning, what I want to talk about, man, is the power of the Word of God. The power of the Word of God. That's what I want to talk about this morning. Right? It says, and so what I want to start off for, remember my whole goal for this year, for this January month, is letting people know how to achieve all those resolutions. Because every year we make these resolutions and by this time of the month, we already, you know, don't have the strength, don't have the power, don't have the will to go on to do the things that we say we're going to do. So I'm just trying to show people what is going to give you the consistency, what is going to help you to achieve those goals there, right? But um, let's start off with this, what it's saying. Remember today, the topic is the power of the Word of God, the power of the Word of God. First, let's see what the Word of God is. In First John 1, 1, we did this a few days ago. It said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the word was God. So the word is God. And then in John 1, 14 went on to say, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He has been seen in his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. So it's saying in the beginning was the word and then the word was God and the same word became flesh, right? So the word is God and the God is word, right? So let's see the power of God or the power of the word, which is God, right? Let's see the power of the word is how powerful the word is, right? In Hebrews 4.12, Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is a living and active, is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, and dis discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart, right? Let's go down again slowly. Hebrews 4.12, he said, For the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit. And I'm going to explain that. Of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Now, this, 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 the word of God, he said, is sharper than a two-edged sword, right? And, and and it's piercing between the vision of soul and spirit. You know what your soul is? Your soul is the part, is a part of you that consists of your mind, your character, your thoughts, your feelings. That's your soul, right? So he's saying this sword is like the, the, the division of soul and of the spirit. Because this is what the evil forces do, right? The lock on your mind. So all those thoughts and stuff you get in, you want to think differently. You want to think positive. You want to, you know, they're, they're locking on on you, just giving you negative thoughts. They lock on on your mind. They're giving you negative thoughts. Your character, right? They lock on and they got you doing things out of characters. We said your thoughts, your feelings. Yeah, you so, so they, they lock on on that. That's why you want to kick the habit that you have, but you can't kick it because the enemy lock on on there and he controlling the part of you. He controlling your mind. He controlling your thoughts. 
Jeremy Grimes, good morning, good morning. So he's controlling your mind, he's controlling your thoughts. So that's why you want to do things differently, but you can't because so that's what God's saying. His word is that soul, is that sharp edged sword. We're going to scrape those spirits off of those parts of you. You like you deboning the chicken? If you deboning the chicken, you get a sharp knife and you just cut in close to the bone and, and get in. So he said, that's what his word can do. It's only his word can do that just to get those forces off you. That's why you want to do certain things and you can't do it because the enemy's locked on on there. He's saying the only way to script the enemy off is by my word, which is me. And, and, and they got to tremble when they hear my word, right? So let's see my two, four, four saying. Uh, two, four, four, saying, but he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Again, you see how powerful this word is. He said, we should not live by bread alone, right? We shall by every word. That means the things that you want to do, the things that you want to achieve, use the word of God to achieve them. See what the word say about that particular thing you're trying to achieve. You want to get your marriage better. You want a financial breakthroughs. You want your healing. You want a job. You want whatever it is. You find a word that talks about that. And he's saying that's what we should live by. That's when he say we shouldn't live by bread alone. We shouldn't be eating only. Right? Now that's where the fasting come in. So you shouldn't live by bread alone, but by the word. You fast Use the word as your food for the time when you fast in, right? And that's how you're going to get your breakthroughs, right? Psalm 119, 105 said, The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, right? This is what the psalm is saying, which was David. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So you want direction. Remember, we talk about the direction. If you want direction, he said, do not um, lean on your own understanding, right? Do not lean on your own understanding, so that's what the psalm is saying. Your word, your word is a lamp to my feet, it, it, you know, and a light to my path. It light up the path. You, you, you're going along the lighted path. You know where you're going, but you're going along the lighted path. You just say, follow the path with the light. And that's what the psalm is saying. When you use the word, he's going to direct you. He said, lean not on your own understanding, right? So he said, lean not on your own understanding. Let me guide your way, right? John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. His word is truth, right? His word is truth. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. It says, "All scriptures, all scriptures, inspired by God, and is useful to teach us what is true." And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Remember we talk about using the scriptures as a mirror. Looking yourself through the lens of the scripture and see if you're measuring up. So that's what he's saying here. This is what the scripture is saying. All scriptures inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work, right? So he's saying all scriptures inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives, right? It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right, right? So God uses us to prepare us to equip his people to do every good work. Matthew 24, 25, it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away saying so his words will not pass away so that's why it's solid that's why we could use it that's why this is the only thing that's give us our breakthroughs and our blessings the word of god right isaiah 55 11 says so is my word that that goes out of my mouth it will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it, right? So he's saying his word, the gold from his mouth, will not return to him empty, right? But will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So just imagine you're looking for your healing right now, right? You're looking for your healing. You're looking for some breakthrough. You, 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 your kid is sick. Your, 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 your marriage going, going, you know, going down. You got problems in your marriage. You got problems in your job. You, you, you can't find a job. Whatever's your situation. He's saying when you use his words, right? When you use his words, when you use these scriptures, when you look at them as laws and not just some, something there, he's saying it will accomplish. It's not going to return to him empty, 
but it will accomplish what he desire, right? So if he said, I'm Jehovah Jireh, the God of healing, I'm going to heal, he's saying, it, it, it's going to achieve its purpose. Once you, you know, we talk about a lot of things, following the word and doing what it says. So he's saying, once you follow these laws and do what it says, it will accomplish what is desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So he's saying, if the purpose was to heal you, you following along and you doing what you're supposed to do, it's going to achieve that purpose of healing healing you that's what it's saying let me read that again isaiah 55 11 so is my word that goes out of my mouth it will not return to me empty but will accomplish what i desire and achieve the purpose for which i sent it so he's saying it if you follow these laws like i'm saying look at them as laws look at just how you got to follow the law of the land follow these as laws don't look at them as scriptures look at them as laws that i have to follow these laws and he's saying it will accomplish so if it's your healing you're looking for he's saying it will accomplish that if it's a financial breakthrough he said it will accomplish that if it's your marriage he's saying it will accomplish that right Let's look at one more. Isaiah 48. He said, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Will stand forever. The grass will wither, the flowers going to fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Man, so I'm trying to get this message home that the word, the word, the word, don't let people tell you, go and do this, go and do that, go on a car and don't spin wrong by four-way car and throw two things in. No, 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 put this thing in your house. Don't worry with all of that. That's from the camp of the enemy. The word of God is going to give you your breakthroughs, your blessings, everything you seek in. That's what you're going to get. And the word of God is going to give you that. Nothing else, right? Nothing else is going to give you that. But the word, man, hear what he's saying here. And I like this scripture here, Hebrews 4.12, right? For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the vision of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow. And this, he's saying, man, these evil forces lock on on our thinking. That's why we can't think positive. That's why we cannot... Um, we, 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 he, the, the, taking us away from the word and, and have us doing all kind of these things for our breakthroughs and looking all different places. Because they know if you start to use the word, that sharp two edged sword, as he said, the word is going to scrape them off of our mind that we can think properly. It's going to scrape them off of our will. So we will have the, the energy. We will have the desire to do the things that we need to do. But because they are locked on there, they're controlling our desire. So we lack in the desire to do the things we need to do. But he's saying, my word is that sharp knife like we can use to debone the chicken. And I'm going to scrape them off of your will, your, 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 your intellect, your desires. I'm going to scrape them off there so you can have the desire. You can have the will. You can think the right thoughts. To do the things you need to do to get your breakthrough and your blessings, man. Hey, I'm going to leave it there, man. But I said I apologize again. I didn't get to come on at my usual time. It's having some uh, issues with this new phone I have, but I'm going to figure it out. And um, hopefully in the future we won't have no more issues. I'll be on time, right? But have a great day. Have a great day and a blessed weekend, man. We'll talk again on Monday. Okay, then. Goodbye.